You're about to take a deep dive into one of the biggest true crime cases in the universe, or at least on our part of the planet. From the Hidden Killers podcast and True Crime Today. We're diving into a story that's been making headlines lately, you know, about those charges against Sean Diddy Combs. It's easy to get caught up in the legal back and forth. It is. It's important to remember there's a human side to every story like this. Absolutely. And that's what we're focusing on today. We want to understand the experience of Thalia Graves, the woman at the center of these allegations. Now, to be clear, Combs is facing some very serious charges, um, accused of rape and assault, Mm -hmm. stemming from an alleged incident with Graves back in 2001. There's even talk of a recording of this assault and attempts to silence Graves. Yeah. But we want to go deeper than just legal terms. Right. Really try to understand Thalia Graves and her story. And especially in a case like this, because it happened so long ago. Right. It often comes down to he said, she said. Exact details matter. So let's unpack what we know about Thalia Graves. From what we've gathered from the People article, it seems like she was a young woman, new to New York City, trying to build a life for herself. Yeah. Immigrated here as a teenager, settling Queens with her family, you know, chasing that American dream. And it's crucial to point out her connection to Combs. It wasn't random, like they hadn't just met. Right. She knew him because of her boyfriend at the time. He worked at Bad Boy Records. Oh, wow. So there's this pre-existing link between them. Right. So that adds another layer to all of this. Exactly. Even before we get to the night of the alleged assault. So it wasn't just a chance encounter at a party or something. Right. There were already these threads of connection and power dynamics at play. Absolutely. And that's something I want to delve into further, because just imagine being in a situation where you're navigating the orbit of someone like Sean Combs, someone with that level of influence. And it's even indirectly connected to someone you care about. Exactly. That's what makes this case so interesting. You're talking about the music industry, an industry built on these power structures. Right. So, yeah, it's a complex situation from the very beginning. And that power dynamic is definitely something we can't ignore as we start to unpack what Graves says happened that night in 2001. The article talks about Comb is inviting her to his house, you know, to discuss her boyfriend's job. And it's like almost feels manipulative in a way, like drawing her in with this sense of, Oh, it's just business. Exactly. It's like this veneer of professional courtesy that can be so disarming. Right. (laughs) Especially if you're already feeling a little intimidated by someone's status. Totally. And then, according to the article, she's picked up, offered a glass of wine. And this is where her account gets really disturbing. This is where things take a dark turn. Yeah. Graves believes she was drugged. Oh, wow. She talks about feeling dizzy, disoriented. And then... Her memory goes blank. It's terrifying. If true, I mean, that's mm. that points to a deliberate attempt to make her unable to consent mm. or even remember what happened. And what she describes next is just, God, the sensory details are just awful. Waking up naked on a pool table awful. with those plastic restraints on her wrists. Ugh. You can practically feel the panic she must have felt in that moment. Just horrifying. It's important to remember trauma can really mess with memory. Sometimes it's those sensory details that come back most clearly. Ray sights, the sounds, the feeling of being trapped. And as difficult as they are to hear, those details are so important for us to really grasp what she went through. Exactly. Especially because of what she alleges happened next. The People article describes a brutal assault, one that Graves says continued even after she regained consciousness. And this is where things get really complicated from a legal standpoint. Because so much time has passed. Exactly. When you're talking about an assault that allegedly happened years ago, gathering evidence becomes incredibly difficult. Right. Memories can fade. Details get mixed up. Right, right. It's just really hard to build a case. Which makes what Graves did that night even more significant, I think. The article says that even though she was terrified, she still went to the hospital with a friend. Wow. Just hours after the alleged assault. That's huge. To go seek medical attention, even if she wasn't ready to go to the police. That shows so much strength in the face of that kind of trauma. It really does. But it also makes you wonder what must have been going through her mind at that point. The article says she was too afraid to even tell the hospital staff what had really happened. Just imagine the fear. I mean, to accuse someone like Sean Combs... Someone with that level of wealth and power. It's overwhelming to even think about. The potential repercussions for speaking out, it's no wonder she stayed silent. 
And you can tell reading the article that fear, that vulnerability, it really stuck with her. It's like even when she was trying to move on to rebuild, there is always this weight holding her back. Yeah. And it's not just in her head, right? Mm -hmm. The article mentions threats, allegedly from Combs and his bodyguard. Oh. Like literally telling her to stay quiet about what happened. It's chilling. Imagine the pressure of that, the constant fear of what might happen if you speak up. It's no wonder she felt like she had to disappear. Because she moved. Multiple times, actually. Wow. The article mentions it. Like, she was desperately trying to outrun what happened. Right. To put distance between herself and, and him and those threats. It's heartbreaking, really. She's carrying this trauma, this fear for years. And then in 2023... It all comes crashing back. That's when she finds out about the video. The alleged recording of the assault. Yeah. That must have been. God, I can't even imagine. The article says she was devastated. Of course. To think that there might be a visual record of that night out there. It's just awful. It's a violation on a whole other level. But as we talked about before, that video could also be a turning point. It could be what finally brings some accountability. Exactly. In a legal sense, a video like that. Mm hmm. That could be huge. Right. It could back up her claims, give her story the way it needs to be heard. Right. But it goes beyond just the legal side of things. You know, it's like for a victim to know that there's proof that their experience is validated. Mm. That can be incredibly powerful. Absolutely. It can give them the strength to finally break their silence. And that's what it feels like she's doing now. The article ends with her holding this press conference, speaking out, sharing her story with tears in her eyes. After all this time, it's finally coming out. That takes immense courage. To speak out against someone like Diddy after more than 20 years of silence, it makes you question everything. You know, mm -hmm. like, what does it say about our society that it takes something this drastic, this public, for a story like this to even have a chance of being heard? It's a really good question. And it makes you think about all the other stories out there, the ones we haven't heard. It's exactly. And it makes you wonder... What can we do to change things? How do we create a world where victims feel safe coming forward sooner, where they know they'll be believed, not just when there's a video, but always? That's the question we should all be asking ourselves. It's not easy, but it's a conversation we need to have. I think that's a great place to leave it for today. This deep dive into Thalia Graves' story. It's a powerful reminder that behind the headlines, behind the legal battles, there are real people whose lives are forever changed by these events. In a world where the darkest secrets lie just beneath the surface. Well, they said it was an accident, but the evidence says otherwise. Where hidden killers roam unnoticed in the shadows. Well, I think you would definitely be looking at a, a blend of toxic, very bad narcissistic personality traits, and they will be vengeful and possibly resort to violence. Join Tony Bruschi as he uncovers the truth behind the most chilling cases. They said it was an accident, but the evidence clearly says otherwise. Each episode, we dig deep into the minds of those who commit the unthinkable. To your point of narcissism, he thinks in his own mind how witty he is, yeah. but he lost that jury. I, I was I was done with him in two minutes. From unsolved mysteries to infamous crimes. Geez, you've just talked about how you've taught yourself how to do everything under the sun. I bet you did a YouTube video, how to best kill somebody with a knife. Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi takes you where few dare to go. How does someone with such a dark secret go unnoticed? For so long. With multiple new episodes every single day. We're not just telling stories, we're seeking justice. Listen now on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Just search for Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi.